Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. And as part of the Booker long list for 2024, um, I'm going through all of the books where I can. Um, and next up, we have this wonderful book, uh, Hisham Matar's, uh, I've now forgotten the name of the book, My Friends, there we go. Um, and I think this book is really quite special in many, many ways, and I'm, I'm really excited to talk about it. Um, I will, there will be some parts of this this uh, review where I go into some spoilers and again I'll flag where that comes up um, but I just really want to talk about the book as a whole so if you haven't read it yet but want to hear a little bit the first bit should be fine for you um, but feel free to duck out at the spoilers if you need to and with that let's get started on the book. So in this book we essentially mostly follow the lives of two men um, the kind of friends I guess of the title of the, the book but um, we we follow them through quite a few very difficult political moments of upheaval in their lives. Um, sometimes, yeah, this is a, a moment of political upheaval that is very much the wider world. Sometimes it is very much on the micro level of sort of everything around them in their personal lives that is just sort of imploding at once. But essentially the core focus is um, a young man called Coloured. Um, and he is uh, very good friends with a man called Mustafa. And the two of them together have this life that is constantly entwined with, with one another. Um, but they are both uh, Libyan men whose lives are massively complicated by the Gaddafi regime. And this shows its, it shows its face in many, many ways. Um, we get the feeling quite early on that there is a large amount of sort of almost history haunting their lives um there's a there's a sense um that comes up and again without spoiling anything there's a sense that comes up that essentially their libyanness is haunting them at every stage so there are you know anytime they watch the news there'll be something that comes up about the Gaddafi regime or something about libya more broadly and that permeates into their day-to-day -day life where they never quite feel that they've escaped libya um, but they also never quite feel like they can also let go of the idea of Libya. And obviously, you know, their, their identity is sort of born out of it as well. They are Libyan, they were raised in Libya, and so it has this sort of history um, that is ever-present in their lives. Um, and particularly, we follow uh, a lot of what that looks like for how they never quite feel rested or at ease in any place around them. So um, a moment that comes up in the book and a moment that I didn't know about, uh, I didn't know was real actually, um, and I sort of had to look up afterwards as well, um, was an attack that happened at an embassy in London, at the Libyan embassy. And it's related to the Gaddafi regime and it's a moment that was also surrounded by a great deal of protest. There were sort of demonstrations regularly um, about uh, about the Gaddafi regime in various in various ways, and and this means that these men never again feel sort of safe because they want to take part in the protests, um, but to do so means to expose yourself um, to potential pushback. You know your may be seen by some Libyans as being a traitor to the cause. You may be seen by some other Libyans as being, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're fighting the good fight, but why are you doing it from London and not from within Libya? And there are these sorts of discussions that come up quite regularly of this sort of never quite being enough in any of these locations. Um, it's almost that you're the only way to be sort of properly Libyan for some of the characters is to stay in Libya and live in certain conditions and never complain and always do this thing. You know, there's a kind of set of rules that seem to permeate from them. And right at the beginning of the book, and this isn't a spoiler um, because it is literally right at the beginning of the book, um, we have a sense of these two men being separate for a while. So these two men uh, saying goodbye in King's Cross Station in London. This book is very... The, the the places in London it's set are places that I was often in when I was reading this book, which was very much, un, very, very unnerving. Like very central London, particularly like around King's Cross and Euston and a few other places. Anyway, um, and at one point, these two men are sort of have this moment in uh, King's Cross where for a large part, we are sitting inside the head of one character, watching the other character walk away. And there's a sense for all those moments in it that at any point one of the characters could yell out and say hey come back here and they would be reunited or 
their friendship would survive in a different way because of somebody stepping in and saying, hey, actually, before you leave, here's this thing. And there's a sense already that they've been growing apart. And this is kind of something the book kind of interrogates, this idea that um, the, the sort of the, the process of being friends with someone um, can entail these sort of moments where you're separate and apart and feel very different. And particularly for these two men, the thing that has sort of initially bound them together in the sense of this sort of shared history and the shared understanding of sort of Libyanness um, also is the thing that drives them apart because sometimes for them the gulf of what's in between them of trying to just make it through another day is so big that it feels impossible to have space in your life for this other person and the book, I think, really interrogates friendship in this fascinating way as part of that, that actually wider, so, wider socio-politics have a massive effect on the ways that you're able to have relationships with people, whether that's because of the ways that you're working or what's going on in the world or your differing beliefs about something. The book really interrogates that whole thing in a way that actually something like Jenny Erpenbeck's Kairos, I think, the, the winner of the International Booker Prize, did so brilliantly, which is this idea of how the political circumstances affect this sort of romantic relationship and how the ways that you, you your level of ease with the world affects your ability to be at ease with other people. Um, and for these two men in particular, the, they never really seem at ease. There's a, a sort of sense of, well, if I go to this protest and this happens, what will that mean for me then? If I do this thing, what does that mean for me? Um, and the two men just live these sorts of twinned lives in many ways, but there's always something that's a bit distant and a bit difficult. And I just think it's really masterfully done how this book manages to balance those two conversations, um, or the, 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 the two lives rather of the men, um, in a way that investigates that. Um, and I, it's a book that I found really special as a result of that. I think it, it deals with that so cleverly um, and it doesn't cede to that kind of, it doesn't go for an easy option. It so easily could just tell a story of like, well, isn't life hard? But there's something about the displacement for these two men, the ways that they are never really comfortable um, and the, the effect that has on their lives that just creates this this fascinating, I think, uh, tale of the, the ways that politics interferes in lives. Um, and with that, let's go into talking about some spoilers. If you do need to drop off here, that's absolutely fine. But um, yeah, let's talk more about this book. So into some spoiler territory, but one of the ways the book explores this is also through the role of literature itself, which takes on itself a kind of almost meta level of sort of commentary because we are ourselves reading a book. Um, and in reading a book, we are maybe also escaping um, and trying to find a place for ourselves in the same ways that maybe the characters are. And Coloured, um, for a fair bit of the book, is uh, also sort of also sort of engages with thoughts about certain writers that he likes or about literature. And he goes down these sorts of rabbit holes about the lessons he's learning from literature. And that in itself, I think, poses a question about what it means for us as this audience to be reading the book. Um, I myself not having anywhere near the kind of... Um, kind of uh, personal history that he's had um, in the book, that, that Khaled and, and Mustafa have in the book. It's interesting that I also get to engage with this book as someone who is just learning about this topic, um, as opposed to feeling something deeply personal that connects me to it in a way that's perhaps quite horrible. So the idea of you know, in, engaging with a book that talks about trauma and having to kind of perform a certain type of trauma and, and understand it is something that's interesting about the way this book is framed, that um, this, you know, Hisham Matar himself with um, sort of uh, Libyan heritage also is writing a book about a character reading a book, reading books to try and escape the very thing that he's just been writing about. There's a kind of way that this book is engaging with those ideas of what it means to really... Um, engage with stories and with literature and in that sense I think it's also really clever as a book as commentary on the process of reading and the process of trying to find meaning um, in something else and what we see particularly um, with the two men is this sort of lack of ability to understand each other is sort of also borne out in certain decisions so I mentioned this protest and this sort of uh, set of 
of things happening around the embassy, you know, Khalid is involved in one of these attacks in a way that leaves him sort of physically wounded and sort of physically hurt. And everybody around him is sort of saying, well, you don't need to do this. Look, the priority for you, you've gone abroad and you're studying English literature and, you know, sort of you're engaging with books and you're engaging with these things. You don't need to be part of this anymore. You don't need to be part of the big political um, protests or kind of displays or, or any demonstrations or anything like that. You just need to live now a nice, peaceful life and live that peaceful life for us, for the people who care about you, who are perhaps still in Libya or, or what have you. But he finds that a tricky balance to keep, that that feels to some degree like he's being told to pretend it doesn't exist. And in some ways, he then is also playing the role of someone like us, the reader, who gets to, for the point of, you know, the time that we're reading this book, get to engage with this as if it's a story and not a real thing that happened in terms of, you know, sort of the actual real life events in the book. And so in many ways, we get to sort of do that day daydreaming with him of what would it be like to not have to live that kind of trauma and that kind of difficulty. But for him, the kind of, he is balancing so many different hopes by trying to study everybody around him, is sort of seeing him as this sort of success story. Um, lots of other people are seeing him, as I mentioned earlier, as being a sort of turncoat or kind of, you know, betraying the Libyan people by kind of leaving and doing these things and whatever. But his family are telling him to stay safe and they don't want him to be part of these protests or anything because to do so might jeopardise his visa, um, it might jeopardise his safety. And both of those things that they would also risk everything for to some degree. And so he's their hope. He's this sort of um, beacon that they are able to kind of support from afar. And... Um, and I think that, as a result, this book opens up this really interesting discussion about the kinds of pressures that are put on people to um, to play sort of multiple roles at once. He's sort of performing the kind of the the role of a young man who is Libyan and therefore sort of needs to be on top of knowing about all these things. He also doesn't want to know some of these things because he wants to just be happy and to live a life that doesn't involve thinking about it, but he can't escape that. And for some people, he's too Libyan. For some people, he's not Libyan enough. And he and his friend, to some degree, are the only people who can understand each other in that capacity. But equally, it's just such a big pressure to put on any kind of relationship. Um, and a friendship even kind of can't necessarily hold that level of difficulty, as we see in various parts of the book. And so that opening scene of the two men um, being apart, like physically apart in King's Cross Station, I think it's King's Cross at least, um, is... Um, it kind of comes back through multiple parts of the book that we sort of start to understand more and more why it is that you would see your supposedly best friend walking away from you knowing that this is maybe the last time you'll ever see them and yet you don't want to say anything because it's too big to interrupt them in that moment or it's too big to admit your vulnerability or to to try and even put words to something that's been so huge in your life. Um, and so I think as a result, this book is just such a masterpiece in addressing such complicated issues in a way that's, I think, really beautifully done. It's very tender and very softly done. Um, and that sense of being displaced from yourself and from your country is just so uh, sort of powerful and resonant throughout the whole book, I think. I'm going to leave that there because I can go on talking about that for ages. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, please do try and avoid spoilers if you can um, in the comments. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this book as much as I did. Um, and this is a book that I can very much see really being in the top uh, sort of, you know, the sort of high odds of, of really taking the thing, you know, winning winning the booker and or being at least sort of shortlisted. I think it's an exceptional novel. The fact that it won the Orwell Prize for Political Fiction, I think is quite telling um, as well, because I think it, it really does the, it really does the thing of being a political novel exceptionally well, um, whilst wearing, it wears it quite lightly at times and also quite strongly at other times, but I think it finds the balance in exactly the right way. I've been Bob the Booker. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.